Hey, how's everybody doing? We're halfway through um, this whole term. We're just about done with week number three. And I wanted to give you um, a video to put some of the reading into context. You're doing wonderful. I know there's quite a bit of reading for you to go through, um, but I hope that you're able to draw out the main points and start to see some similarities and some big themes of this whole class starting to really illustrate through the pages here. So a big thing that we're doing is looking at how to compare these awesome river valleys um, and amazing cultures that form and amazing cultures that um, have identity formation that lasts through centuries, millennium. Um, so we looked at Mesopotamia, compare that to uh, the culture from the environment and how much the environment plays to the formation of religion, to the formation of their identity, and how that compares and differs, and in some cases uh, are similar to what rose in Egypt. Um, and this week, I, I hope you're able to see some interesting similarities as well with those river valleys, but also start to see something different forming by looking at India and China. Now, India and China, there's quite a bit of information, and, and you might not have studied India and China in this way before. So take your time with it, and I hope you're enjoying it um, as much as I do. I like this chap these chapters quite a bit. Um, but the big part of this are two big themes that need to cut through uh, both chapters that are very, very important. The first is going back to what we talked about with the formation of world systems of exchange, right? Where you start to, in these valleys, when people start coming together, starting to create urbanization uh, where people plant. And why are they staying there? Well, at first, the earliest, the Neolithic, they're planting to watch their plants grow, right? They need to stay put to start cultivating and do both um, domestication of plants and animals. So as they stay and as there's a surplus of food, then people are able to do other things than just having to plant. So you start to have different trades come about. You have political systems, you have power playing a huge role of how that looks inside a community and how you're able to uh, flex that power with your neighbors. And so you start to create these civilizations. Now as that grows, as you saw with Mesopotamia, as you saw that with Egypt, um, those grow into very complex societies. Now as those grow and their influence grows and their trade networks grow, well that's where these world systems of exchange come into play. Because they start to trade further and further away and they start to exchange both goods and ideas. People are transforming and changing all over the place, they're able to do that. And also ideas. And ideas start to form and start to change and start to morph with uh, people that they interact with. And part of ideas is religion and the ideas of um, political structures and ideas of what's one identity versus another. Uh, so all of that starts to really take shape in this broad theme of world systems of exchange. Now, um, in our t textbook, they talk about that a little bit underneath, if you read between the lines, of course. Um, and you see that with India. You see that with our first character of this travel narrative, Ashoka, right? So you got this, this, this king who's, who's really showing and flexing his power um, by making sure that everybody traveling through the land and traveling through his sphere of influence is able to know who he is, knows what they're all about, and also, most importantly, what those the religion there is really forming and, and bringing, uniting people in a different way. So it's not just regional form, formation of identity, but also ideals and religion and how Buddhism plays a huge role. Now you tie that into this growing concept of the Silk Road. And as the Silk Road really starts to form between India and China, and this, the lands all in between there, how Buddhism, how Hinduism, how Confucianism, all these start to spread along with goods like this right here. This is black pepper. Black pepper comes from India. And uh, as long as the 13th century BCE, you see pepper starting to play a prominent role in India's trade. Um, along the, the coast of, of East Africa, later on, that's going to mix in with trade networks of uh, the Islamic world and start to form its own identity between Indian, East African, and um, Arabic creating what's called Swahili. And if you've seen The Lion King and Ma Tawendia, blah, 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 and Akuna Matata, that is Swahili. And Swahili is a syncretized mixture of 
of Arabic, of, of Indian, and of uh, East African languages and cultures. So it morphs together. Well, that's an example of something you might be recognized from The Lion King, but in this time period, we're talking about same things happening in this, in this interaction around India and as things spread and interact with China. So all these things that you're seeing, and you're seeing these great vast empires starting to emerge, and this view of the king um, like a living God, and this view of this permeable afterlife and life on earth, and how these huge projects undertake uh, to sort of show the power, show the people, and also the identity and these ideas, and how important those all work together, and how those also work together in the system of exchange. So pepper is a good example because um, as it was spreading, not only spread in this world system of change, of exchange between China and India, but as we're going to see next week when this whole Mediterranean world starts to unify and grow under Alexander and, and Greece, and then later Rome, and then later that splits and creates another systems. All that, a huge part of that, is spices like this pepper and trying to get to pepper in India. Um, so I think that's, a, that's an important thing that even in this foundation of what we're talking about, these systems of exchange are helping to unite people, helping to create what their identity is, helping to form these huge complex societies and world universal religions. You see Buddhism arguably being talked about as the first universal religion because it's able to adapt. It's able to cross boundaries, regional boundaries, and adapt into societies. So it adapts into um, Indian culture. You see Confucianism uh, tied into Taoism, so those are important things. Confucianism rules as the main ideology of China after the Han Dynasty. So Han Dynasty is from 202 BCE all the way up to around 200 CE. Um, and after that, until the 20th century, Confucianism is an important key. So, so be, make sure you understand this concepts of Confucianism, the meritocracy that accompanies it, the ideologies of Taoism, how those all work together, um, and also look at this idea of the mandate of heaven. And the mandate of heaven, and there's an interesting circle, if you look at the mandate of heaven, um, of how it sort of works, and it's talked about in the textbook, so make sure you understand this idea of the mandate of heaven and how the environmental factors, how if there's peasants who are unhappy, uh, if there's famine in the land, um, that how people of power lose their status. They could lose this mandate of heaven and how it justifies people to revolt. It creates a huge peasant revolt that you've read about. Um, and see how this mandate of heaven works. Uh, that's an important thing as well that you're going to be reading. Um, but look at the similarities and differences of China and India. Um, maybe not directly of this is, looks the same and this looks the same, but some of the concepts of how religion works, of how unification works, environmental factors that we've talked about with Mesopotamia. Um, how's that, the Yellow River um, in, in China and how those play a crucial role in what's going to develop and create uh, something new in these two river valleys that creates incredibly complex and vast empires. So enjoy these. If you have any questions, please email me. Um, the discussions look like they're going smoothly, so continue on. Hope you're having fun with it, and we'll talk soon.